On today's episode of VG News, we have four big stories for you guys. One of them being just really shocking. We have brand new details about the Nintendo Switch 2 that I think are going to excite some of you guys, especially with some of the redesign aspects going into this next platform. We have some updates on BlizzCon and so much more. Paper Mario 1000, your door news, anyone? Oh boy, let's not wait any longer. Let's dive right in because Paper Mario 1000, your door has certainly begun its marketing campaign. In fact, here's some footage that Nintendo provided and previews dropped as well. And Nintendo seems to recognize it's the game they have on deck that is driving the most excitement. This week, they dropped a massive five-minute overview trailer that showed a ton of brand new footage. But more than that, there seems to be some new features shown off. They also added some new information to the official website, and we learned some things through official preview footage. So let's go over some of this stuff. We talked in the past about a new button prompt that seemed to indicate a quick select option to switch characters, but in this five minute overview, we get to see it in action with a quick swap to Madame Flurry to use her blowing ability to solve a puzzle. They also went ahead and added a nostalgic tunes badge, which when used changes the sounds and music in the game back to the original GameCube stuff. Unfortunately, there are no other new badges as the original game had 85 badges and this game's total is 86. There are lots of new music and sounds in the game. Hooktail has a deeper, more dragony voice. Mayor Koopa's voice is also deeper. The Traveling Sisters, Three Toadettes, now all have their own unique sounds for their voice. Miss Mouse is now some mousy style squeaks going on, and Thwomp now sounds much like he does in the rest of the Mario series. They added new guard text that wasn't in the original game. The battle theme now changes based on location, which is a neat touch. We now know that the new purple toad is called the Battle Master Toad, and he's basically a guide to teach you how to play the various aspects of the game. And the title screen seemingly updates as you add new characters to your party, thanks to seeing a screenshot of Mario only on the title screen, then a new one featuring Goombella. They also added a little hot dog photo op at Glitzville, and you have to wonder if this is a new thing that they will have just added throughout the rest of the game. They also updated Quick Travel with a brand new pipe room that has all of the Quick Travel stuff in the same location. They also made it so you could now hold 15 items by default instead of the original game's 10, which I think is actually pretty cool. As a bit of a letdown, we also learned the game's only running at 30 FPS. Now, a lot of people who played the preview said this wasn't that noticeable and didn't really affect gameplay that much, but it still would have been nice personally for me to see 60 FPS in there. Uh, a lot of this information, we ended up relying upon Game Explains breakdown and various videos they've done. We'll link to some of that stuff down below because, again, I'm not like the biggest expert in Paper Mario 1000 Near Door, so we're reliant upon other people who are. So shout out to Tris and the rest of the Game Explain crew for the work done on this. Uh, great people over there. All right. We got to get into our next story now, though, because BlizzCon, oh, man, this thing's been going on for many, many years. I'm really big into Blizzard Entertainment's games. I love Diablo. I love uh, StarCraft. I'm really into World of Warcraft and even the OG Warcraft games one through three. So I've never been to a BlizzCon, but it's always been like just like the E3, you know, when I wanted to go to E3 and then I eventually did. I've always wanted to go to BlizzCon. Well, BlizzCon's not happening this year. Now, they are claiming it will come back, but... Let's get into the official statement right off of the Blizzard Entertainment and BlizzCon website. They went on to state the following. After careful consideration over the last year, we at Blizzard have made the decision to not hold BlizzCon in 2024. This decision was not made lightly as BlizzCon remains a very special event for all of us. And we know many of you look forward to it. While we're approaching this year differently as we have explored different event formats in the past, Rest assured that we are just as excited as ever to bring BlizzCon back in future years. Over the next few months, we'll be sharing more details about our launches coming later this year, including World of Warcraft, The War Within, and Diablo 4's first expansion. 
Vessel of Hatred. To celebrate these upcoming releases and to bring our communities together in new and special ways, we will soon share some exciting plans for other industry trade shows and conventions like Gamescom. We can't wait to tell you more about those plans soon. We're also looking forward to the Overwatch Champion Series stops at both DreamHack Dallas and DreamHack Stockholm. And we're thrilled to be planning multiple global in-person events to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Warcraft, which will be held in addition to the in-game celebrations across our Warcraft games throughout 2024. While these events are distinct from BlizzCon, we're harnessing all of our creativity and imagination to ensure that they carry the same spirit of celebration and togetherness. Our hope is that these experiences, alongside several live-streamed industry events, where we'll keep you up to date on what's happening in our game universes, we'll capture the essence of what makes the Blizzard community so special. No matter how you choose to connect with us at these events this year, whether it be in person or virtually, we can't wait to see you there. Now, look, obviously this could be the end of BlizzCon as we know it, or just the end in general. I know they're promising future shows, but so did E3, and then that didn't happen. Uh, look, obviously Blizzard Entertainment was recently part of a purchase and acquisition by Microsoft. That probably plays a huge role. There's probably some management turnover and other things shifting along the way. And yes, Blizzard Entertainment was actually at the center of, of, of recent harassment stuff that was popping up over the last couple of years. So that might have played a role in this as well. Look, all I know is I'm excited for some of the stuff they have coming on. I obviously hope the company itself has you know, made some internal improvements, especially once Microsoft got involved, because that's one of the things I was kind of looking forward to with Microsoft acquiring Blizzard Entertainment was potentially fixing those internal issues that were causing problems with some of their employees and harassment. We definitely do not support that sort of stuff in this industry. Uh, and we'll keep you up to date, obviously, in the latest with the Blizzard games and the expansion packs and everything else as the year goes on. I do have the War Within pre-ordered, so again, I'm not writing this company off entirely. I just... I hope that we hear some positive news from employees at some point. But uh, for now, there's no BlizzCon this year. Now... Our next story is, man, this one has a lot of twists and turns. Uh, this, this is about a story about Nintendo supposedly doing a takedown request, well, to Gary's Mod. A, it, it's like an application, a game, a sandbox of sorts where people can create their own content. It's been around since 2006, very popular on Steam. Uh, made by Face Punch Studios, who wasn't really a studio at the time, but has now become one. And look, this is a, a, just this is so much twists and turns. I got to refer to my notes on all of it because, man, this is wild. So a controversy stirred around an announcement made from the creator of Gary's Mod, uh, a popular sandbox game that provided tools for people to create their own systems and content. It's been a staple on Steam since its release in 2006 and has a ton of, uh, let's just say, fan-created content that certainly violates a lot of IP and copyright laws, which isn't unusual for the kind of game that it is. Roblox is an example. It's another game that has a lot of that stuff going on because it's pretty hard to control a game that just lets you freely create your own content. Now, they announced on Steam that Nintendo sent a takedown notice to remove all Nintendo content from the game. Seems simple enough, I guess. Not great news, but whatever. It should have probably just could have ended right there. However, the community doubted that it was a demand actually from Nintendo. Remember, this stuff's been around for nearly 20 years due to some known bad faith actors that have been filing false DMCAs against several individual mods for the game, including mods from fans for that particular game. The false claims used many clever tactics to pretend to be Nintendo's legal team. Now, this actually caused quite a bit of stir during our podcast that we had this week when we talked about this with several in the chat claiming that we were spreading misinformation for sharing and discussing Nintendo's takedown of the content due to these concerns, which is fair. If it was fake, it is what it is. But we obviously rely here at Nintendo Prime on the word from the official sources, not fan theory crafting and speculation. That being said, it was a bit of a Wild West and getting called an uninformed fool uh, was certainly interesting. Gary, in response, announced that he and his team are investigating whether or not there was this was an actual legal takedown uh, notice from Nintendo themselves. And as it turns out, and this is I'll show it on screen to you guys, according to Gary, they verified with Nintendo themselves that this was legit. 
Now, keep in mind, Gary is the founder and CEO of Face Punch Studios, who has released a game on Switch and has dev kit access, and thus some contacts at Nintendo. They are not going to share the legal documentation publicly. Some still want to doubt its legitimacy. And Gary posed questions for those that doubt it, which has some thinking this isn't a 100% sure thing. In the end, that's actually the story, and I just want to throw out there that, hey, look, the last official word from Gary is that Nintendo verified this themselves. I doubt he's lying about that. Uh, but he did obviously pose questions for people who doubt it, and I think this is just a general question base for the whole of the fan base just to be like, hey, are you even sure the things that you are saying are reasons something could be faked are faked? Now, again, this is just where the story's at right now. Um, that's my opinion. I want to obviously throw it out to you guys, and you guys let me know in the comments below what you think on this topic. Now, our last story deals with the Nintendo Switch 2 because we have a brand new report coming out from Vandal. Now, what's important to note about Vandal, which is a Spanish outlet, is they were involved with the Switch OLED reports back in 2021, and they were actually the original source on it having an Ethernet jack and a new type of kickstand and what kind of kickstand. It would be a Surface style kickstand. Now what's fascinating about this is Vandal was not involved with claiming that it was going to have an increased spec and be a more powerful platform. So all the Switch Pro reports, Vandal wasn't involved with that. They actually only were involved with these particular aspects and that's because their sources seem to have come from manufacturing. This time around, they have sources coming from accessory makers that Nintendo has supposedly shown the platform to so they could make, well, accessories for the system to be available on day one, especially since there are some key differences with the Nintendo Switch 2, and we're going to dive into those differences right now. Now, you guys might remember how the original Joy-Cons attached to Switch, right? You have your rail system, and it would create Joy-Con wobble at times, and the locking mechanism were just these little plastic nubs that were easy to break. And look, Joy-Cons obviously have a lot of other issues, right? They're, they're some of the worst controllers, I would argue, out there, but they got the job done, and Nintendo has made minor improvements over time, but nothing that's really fixed everything. Well, it does look like, guys we are going to get brand new Joy-Cons. And we know this because how the Joy-Cons connect are going to be entirely different. Instead of sliding on rails, they're actually going to use a form of magnet. Now, we don't know if this is like an electric-based magnet uh, or if they're just you know, internal magnets. I would presume it's some sort of electric magnet because then you can also have a mechanism where you could turn the electric magnet off to easily detach. But whatever the case is, it seems that this might be something Nintendo is looking at here. And I think this might be a good idea. We've seen other systems out there, other even handheld PCs use a magnet type system. And it seems to be pretty user friendly. Nintendo did patent something about this, by the way, long time ago. It, it was a scrapped idea for Nintendo Switch. Uh, they are looking like they're coming back to it. It'll probably be in a completely different form than those patents had back then. But it also goes to show that sometimes patents can tease things Nintendo might eventually do someday just in a different way. So they didn't tell us how the magnets work or anything like that, but that's important to note because one, it does confirm that your old Joy-Cons are not really going to be compatible, at least in handheld mode. No word on if the old Joy-Cons can still sync with the system to be used, but you won't be able to use it in handheld mode for sure. But it also shows that there will be new Joy-Cons, not that people didn't think that Nintendo would just put the same Joy-Cons on a Switch 2. That would be really confusing. They have to make some sort of changes to the controller. Uh, no other word on the feel of the controller or anything, if it feels significantly different. Uh, one thing they did note about the feel of the platform and everything is that it is bigger than all current Switches, but smaller than the Steam Deck. So if you're worried about this being a Steam Deck level behemoth, don't worry about that. It's going to be sleeker. It's going to be smaller in the hand. It's going to hopefully have a better feel. The Steam Deck actually feels pretty good in the hand. It's just kind of hefty. Now, that all being said, there's also one other thing that they were able to confirm, and this is obviously important for them as accessory manufacturers, and that is the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller will still be compatible. So all the Pro Controllers out there, the official ones, the third-party ones, they should all work just fine with the new system. That's obviously good news for many of us who have invested in a lot of those controllers. Uh, they didn't note if there was going to be any new features, like, you know, if, if 
you can make a new style of Pro Controller specific for Switch 2 that has new functionality that's only available on Switch 2. That much wasn't talked about or confirmed here, probably because they wouldn't be able to talk about or confirm that stuff anyways, because that's like core functionality of the system. I understand you could say the magnetism stuff might be core functionality as well, but I mean, come on. It's just a way to attach controllers. I don't know that it's that big of a spoiler. Now, again, we could treat this all as rumor if you would like, because we can't validate or confirm any of Vandal's sources, nor has anybody else. But they've obviously been very accurate with manufacturing style sources in the past. And these are manufacturing sources for accessory manufacturers that are officially licensed by Nintendo. That's where they're claiming this information comes from. They also claim Nintendo's being extremely secretive about this system. Uh, a couple other things as well. Uh, so secretive, in fact, that they weren't even allowed to look at the full platform. Nintendo was apparently showing this in an opaque box where they were given dimensions and, and uh, then just like, hey, here's dimensions and a couple drawings on like what our our, our, our little, you know, our controllers look like that attach because so, we're going to make third party ones. But um, the funny thing is <laughs> you couldn't, you, they couldn't see the system. They had to hold it inside a box. Uh, so basically put your hands in a box and hold it without looking at it to get a feel for the a very Nintendo's being secretive, man. They're really trying to lock all of this stuff down. Kind of crazy if that's actually what they did uh, to these accessory manufacturers. Uh, but you know what? I'm, I'm just kind of excited that this sounds like it's something that is, is real and tangible and happening. The magnet tie stuff I really like. Obviously, being bigger than the current Switch, I'm fine with that, but not as big as Steam Deck. That's good news to me. Uh, no word on backwards compatibility or anything like that. They didn't get to mess with game software and stuff like that. They did note, however, that apparently Nintendo's reps were like, you know, the system's ready to go. Uh, but Nintendo apparently is just waiting on software lineup. Apparently that's the big reason for the 2025 delay. This is the first time we've heard that, but it's just another source for that information. So I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I know I'm ready for Switch 2 just to be here. Definitely. The funny thing is when, we, when I woke up this morning, uh, this story was not in our VG news. In fact, I had all these other stories and this was just breaking news this morning. So I, look, I, I actually didn't plan to talk about Switch 2 today, but, uh, Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door was supposed to be our headline topic, but hey, you know what? That's the news. You guys let me know what you think about it, and I will catch you guys in the next video.